Today I'd like to talk about the Mako 17 Pro Skiff and four items that I think everyone should know before purchasing one or even a little bit after purchasing one. Uh, if not, I'm sure you'll find some of these things out yourself anyway. Uh, we'll start with number one. We'll start with the slippery spot. There's a slippery spot just as you step off the deck platform here. So if you're standing up here fishing and you go to step down, get a little bit of dew on your boat, a little water, or just water coming in the boat just from waves outside or anything. So there's a spot right here that's super slippery. It's like black ice. Uh, if you're fishing alone and you step here and slip and hurt yourself landing on this thing or hit your head or anything, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Definitely want to do something about the slippery spot. And actually, one of our friends from Bavard Fishing Lunatics, Nick, um, gave me a bunch of grip tape and I'm going to be cutting that up and I'm going to be putting that right here. I bring a lot of random people on the boat and I, last thing I want is someone getting hurt while we're out on a fun fishing trip. Right. I've had a few friends hit it, slip a little bit. I've slipped a couple times on it, even knowing it's there. So it's definitely something you want to um, take care of. Uh, I don't know why Mako even keeps it there. I mean, there's got to be complaints about the thing. Alright, let's go on and talk about the second item. This boat is not self-bailing. I repeat, it's not self-bailing. If you're in the water and it's pouring rain outside and your pump is not working, this thing will fill with water. There's no way for the water to get out unless you're going to manually take it out with a bucket or a hand pump if your pump fails. Right? So, back here, you do have like kind of a self-bailing one, but see how high this is? This is like right to the motor. So your other ones, try to see through here, are down here. So that guy right there, that's that's the one your actual plug goes into. And as you can see, and that's underwater when you're underway. So as soon as you're out there, you're underway, that plug's underwater. And then there's another hole plug that goes underneath that one externally. So again, if you're expecting this thing to drain itself, it's not going to drain itself uh, if your pump breaks down. This leads me to talk about an experience that I had, if you haven't watched the video already. experience I had is, I use braided fishing line on most of my lines. We change up baits constantly, especially fishing the freshwater sw swamps depending on the weather, currents, you know, and uh, so a lot of little fishing tags get dropped on the floor of the boat. So we cut our little line, little piece, and comes down. Apparently, washing out the boat, I pushed a bunch down into the into the bilge, and we tried to pump them out. A piece wrapped inside around my impeller on my 1,000 gallon per hour pump, and it pretty much destroyed my impeller. Now, fortunately, when I noticed this, I was already at home on cleaning out my boat. Now, if you get in this situation out in the water, and you need to pump your boat out quick, maybe you took on water over the front, or, or maybe it's just pouring rain, you're caught up in a storm, and, and you're trying to get the water out of your boat at the same time, what you can do is just open up your live well pump, the impeller slides right off, just pop it right off, and just put it right on your other pump. And then go ahead and put it back in there, and that'll give you at least you know, a means of pumping out your boat. Uh, it's the exact same impeller on both the 500 and the 1000. Um, definitely save that piece of knowledge in your head, because who knows, it could save your boat. Let's talk about item number three, your live well. On all your videos you watch, most likely, if you were like me, because I purchased, I guess, at the transitional period of the live well. A lot of complaints about the live well. The live well was right here. Slide you over here. Push down like this. So this was the live well on the previous models. And complaints were water splashing out, flooding the boat. Pump pump always not pumping, hoses coming disconnected underneath, underneath the console, uh, leaking water into the hull, uh, lots of different complaints about it. Now, they use it as like, they even market it like it's just an extra little ice cooler. I use it for for my all-weather gear storage, like my frog togs and stuff. If we're going out in the swamps, then we'll go ahead and we'll just pack this full of our all-weather gear because it keeps it pretty dry. It's got a little seal around it, so it it's something to use it for. <clears throat> um, if we're fishing salt water or something we go out then we use this to we just put a bunch of ice in it we store our bait in it and this way we don't 
contaminate any of our like actual lunch food or snacks along with the fish we're trying to keep and eat along with our nasty bait. So where is the live well? So 2017 in newer, the live wells back here on the port side aft and so far I've had zero issues with it. I've seen lots of complaints about about the old one but um, I've had no issues with this one here. It's kept my bait alive out in the river, it's kept it alive out in the um, swamps, uh, it doesn't get clogged, it pumps good, I haven't had any issues whatsoever of any of the previous things I heard. Definitely just something to know if you've been reading a lot of negative reviews about the live well. Make sure you're seeing the reviews of the live well on the 2017 uh, Makos compared to you know the 2016 and previous. All right, item number four, storing your boat. Where are you going to store it? This is a big one when everyone's purchasing the boat, and it's something you need to really pay attention to. Uh, you'll see some stuff online where they say they fit their boat in like a 20, like a 20 foot garage. Um, read deeper into those. A lot of them they cut the drywall out in the back and stuck their motor into another room in order to do that. I um, measured out my garage in the beginning, and I was hoping that if I bought a swivel joint for right here that I'd be able to just kind of back it straight in but no matter how I put the motor or anything there's no way it would fit I was still about eight or nine inches short of being able to fit um, directly backing in even if I put the swivel mount on there I ended up purchasing the swivel mount I still have it maybe I'll put it on there one day well as you can see I ended up putting the boat in there kind of vertical it takes up a lot of the garage doesn't make the wife very happy but fortunately we got these baker racks and um, other stuff there where we can store up a lot of stuff. Ended up having to hang my kayak in the ceiling. Um, all my fishing stuff and tools are pretty much down this wall right here, um, all accessible. But my garage, my garage coming from the back wall to like right here, to like right down here, it's about 21 feet. So it don't fit. If you measure out your garage and it's 21, you know, and a half feet. You know, it's not going to fit uh, with the motor on there. With the motor off, yeah, it'll fit. But as long as the motor's on there, uh, no matter how I turned it, no matter how I set it up, it just would not fit. Uh, we marked the ground of how we put it in here because literally this thing's like a jigsaw puzzle. Every time we put it in here, we end up having to do it five times because we need space to get by back here in the door. This is a special refrigerator because it holds all my alcoholic beverages and leftovers and all the stuff that I like. And we ended up having to make this small space to squeeze by. Um, when you come into our garage from the inside, this is what it looks like. Well, you're pretty much just walking right in and you're coming over to a motor. The uh, motor has to be turned, so we take the bungee cord off of it turn the motor to the side and still have a little bit of access to get stuff from over there if we need it. It's a tight fit but basically 21 foot garage um, it fits sideways in my garage with no issues but as you see like even sideways you just saw my motors pretty much almost touching my wall in the back and the front and tongue of the trailer is like almost right Look, it's actually almost over the sensor a little bit right here, so it's close. It, it's definitely close, but in the end, it fits. It's out of the weather. My boat stays clean. So if you notice anything about your Mako uh, Pro Skiff that you think we should know, go ahead and just leave it in the comment sections and you know, subscribe. And as I find things out about my vessel here, I'll um, definitely let you guys know. If I find things I don't like, do like. Uh, but so far, it's been a good ride. I'm very rough with the boat. Uh, I mean, I take it in some crazy spots, it, it, as you've probably seen in my previous videos. If you watch them, I've been stuck a few times. And uh, so far, everything's good to go. Uh, thank you for watching, and I uh, hope, hope you decide to subscribe for more.